Just want to let you lot know that if you're watching this clip on the Fozcast YouTube channel, the full episode is now available to watch exclusively on Spotify. And it's free. Come on. I've got a question for you about, well, for both of you, actually, about the difference uh, a captain is, uh, the difference in a captain between the two sports. Because I, from my perception, looking from a fan, I think it's a very different role as a, a captain. What does a captain do? Do they have day-to-day duties and stuff in rugby or...? I've been in a few different setups. So obviously international level, if you're a captain, then it's, you're with each other for a shorter period of time. So you you can't like manage people throughout the year as well as you can at a club. So if you're like a club captain, and in rugby, by the way, you have like a match day captain. Yeah. And in some environments, I've had a club captain as well, who isn't necessarily going to be your best player, yeah. but he's embedded in the club. He's yeah, immersed. Yeah, yeah. He does all the community stuff. And so I've seen it a few different ways, but... In terms of match day captaincy, like you just huddles throughout the week, like you're trying to get the messages across. One of the biggest things that I've learned and it's helped me massively in any leadership role is delegating. Yeah. So for example, I'd in the week I'd be like, uh, Ben, can you put this message across, please? And I, I need you to say this. If you're kicking from the back and football, I don't know as a goalie, I'd say I need you to put the ball. So really tell the boys how important it is that we need the ball at this end of the pitch where because in rugby it's, it's very tactical in terms of where you play the game and territory and stuff so i'll say to the tens or the kickers of the world i say mate i need this ball down that half of the pitch all game that's yeah. all i need so however you drive that in the week whatever message you're getting across that's all i need you to speak about so when we come to a huddle uh aj's the fly off or callum at bristol i'd be like Aj what do we need you yeah. know and then you say he, your bit you exactly. say your bit you and, do and your then, bit and then he'd be like boys i need you doing this and i'd be like brilliant Heans, what do we need in d nice and yeah. like i'm asking each facet of the game because i'm not an expert at kicking i'm not going to stand there and tell people how to kick you know and i'm not exactly the best defensive player in the world so i'm not going to talk about our d there's people who are the best people in the position to speak but if you're skips you're not going to talk to a striker about scoring a goal yeah right? true that, do you yeah. know what i mean so delegations like a big one um and sort of like yeah just like mediating the conversation yeah. at a high tempo to then get three key points and then we can get after it um as opposed to just coming in and me being like come on boys we got to do this and we are very appropriate about who's speaking when how long what we're getting after yeah i like that's, that did that's you, beautiful did you have because i know in, in rugby you'll have like a captain and then you might have like the scrum might have like a pack leader yeah, yeah. for like uh, in a football team if the if the captain's a centre midfielder would you have a captain within the defence nah, is that it, a thing it's kind of it's not it, I think what the way that you just said it there with delegating to the different sort of positions all over the pitch strategically is probably it, that's a beautiful way of doing it um, you'll have the captain who will do the majority of the talking but it's like you said there it's like lads come on in blah 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 it's not specific it's not position would they have their specific. lieutenants though so let's say who's the captain at Watford now uh Clevs, Tom Cleverley, yeah. Clevs, would would Clevs have a trusted like yeah, two or three? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you'll have two or three, but like the goalie would normally do it. Goalies are talkers anyway, so we'd be. You're always so barking from I, the back. I'd be you? talking yeah. to our defenders. I would be in charge of that kind of thing. But then, because the midfielder is normally the captain anyway in football, he will be so close to the strikers or the wingers and that that he will know what to say to them anyway, sort of thing. Is so that why they put the midfielder as captain? Most so of the time, he's yeah. Next to the D, next to the wing. Next exactly to the striker. that. Yeah, exactly that. Midfielders are normally solid people, you know, sturdy or that kind and of. And the stuff. goalie calls it from. The the back. The goalie's too far away. Goalie's too far away to affect people at the other end of the pitch. You know what I mean? Like you need somebody in amongst it all the time. A lot of, a lot of goalies won't ever be a captain because of that exact reason. But yeah, I will talk to my defenders and I will be sort of, that's my unit. That's the one thing I got when you were doing the GoPro and the goal and uh, like obviously in the championship, that was the one thing that I think surprised people the most about the videos. The was, communication. Was the com- your communication of literally like telling the defenders everything. You were another set of eyes and ears for them. Yeah. And it was absolutely What's that everything. like in rugby? What's the communication like in a game? Yeah, it'd be the scrum half who speaks because he sits behind the defensive line yeah, as, yeah. as you're playing and he, a good scrum half barking at you the whole time. Is it, yeah? And not even like necessarily useful stuff. It's just like, get off the line, Genji, get off the line. Next one, Genji, yeah, get yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And just giving you the tiny little bit of kick that you need because everyone knows what they've got to do to a certain degree. It's just a case of sometimes you're just need reminder a little bit. You need yeah, to, just yeah. need a little bit reminded. Okay, we're nearly there. Ellis, you have been incredible, by the way. Um, before we get into the quickfire questions, right, I want to find out about a rugby team's night out, right? So I've been on the football lads' night oh. out. It's carnage. It's trouble. It's all that kind of stuff. What the what the rugby ones like? Um, 
Uh, I'd say they're a bit different. Uh, <laughs> one of my mates who's actually, he played football, not at a high level, but he always says like, whenever I'm out with the Red Boys, he's like, I ain't coming out of you, you all do handstands and piss on the walls and stuff. And <laughs> it used to be like that back in the day. I think it's changed a bit now. Um, obviously social media, you can't get away with anything now nah, in terms yeah. of having a good laugh. What goes on behind closed doors, stay behind closed doors. Like which is, it's still good, like yeah. in camp and stuff, you all have a good few beers and yeah, some mental stuff happens, but I, I expect it happens in the office as well to yeah, a certain yeah, degree. Yeah. Um, it'd, it'd be pretty tame now, mate. Yeah, it's not what Lies, it used to what a liar. <laughs> so I had this one night out with a, um, with a, some rugby lads. So we're, we ended up on their table and it's the Saracens rugby team. They've got a few England players in there, all that kind of stuff. Um, and the rest of our lads, our football lads, they went off to like the next place, whatever kind of thing. But the, the rugby lads were good lads. They're all chatting, it's, it's wicked. And then they start playing some like drinking games. <laughs> mate, I ain't got a clue what I'm doing here, right? I've not got a clue. But I was the drunkest man, like, I promise you, absolutely spanned, right? Because what were they getting into for? I, I ain't got a clue what the game was. I didn't even explain it properly to me, but it was to do with <laughs> I fingers. I think that was the point, there. It was to That's do with fingers, game, right? And all I was doing every time was drinking. That's all I was doing. It was trouble, mate, honestly. You were the game. Yeah, for sure. Like, I was losing every single time, mate. It was an absolute they've joke. Got a good, uh, they've got a good little social setup down at Sarah's, obviously not too far from London yeah, and stuff. Leicester's yeah. a bit different. It's just like country pubs and stuff. So uh, yeah, yeah. a few more lock-ins as opposed to... Oh, I like a lock -in. There. Um, yeah, beautiful, mate. Right, come on, let's get into it then. Quick fire questions. You ready, yeah? Yeah, boom. All right, Ellis Gange, you ready for these, yeah? I'm ready, mate. Um, any hidden skills? Gaming. PlayStation? Anything. What? What game? League of Legends. League of Legends. Have you heard of it? Yeah, it's Big Seb has here. This is what you he... play League? <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk more later on. Look at his smile on his face here. We'll oh my later. God, if only you lot could see the smile on Sammy's <laughs> face. Buzzard. Uh, favourite meal? Uh, carbonara. Nice. Uh, favourite drink? Soft drink? You know what? A bit weird, but sparkling water or maybe ginger beer? Uh, anything on your bucket list to do in life? I want to skydive or bungee jump, but I think I exceed the weight limit. I think it's 115 for <laughs> yeah, it is. both of them. It is. So it's too heavy, yeah. Got to lose a few cakes. <laughs> <laughs> rugby going to be happy with that? No, not well. That's what I'm going to do it after rugby. <laughs> uh, if you weren't a rugby player, what would you have been? Uh, I would have liked to have tried my hand at boxing. Yeah. Um, I don't think I was ever good enough to be a footballer. Goalkeeper, by the way. I was all right was a goalkeeper. Goal. Um, yeah, maybe boxing. Uh, any phobias? Spiders, horses, and open sea. Yeah, I think all three of them. I agree with it. Is and the needles, one. Needles. Mate, needles. open sea is a problem. Can't stand needles oh. either. But only injections. I've got like loads of tattoos on my feet, but it's a very different feeling to like seeing the. Oh, you go in. You had to have one in your toe the other day. I what know, was that yeah, like? I, just, I got like, it's weird. They say, oh, look away then. Like, I have to keep like fixated on the spot. I can't look away. I hold my breath. Well, you look like, at the needle going. I have to, yeah. The thought of like, oh, this is gross. It goes right through. Open me. sea, mate. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I'm going to come brilliant. back to that. Open sea it might be a new unlocked fear for me, yeah. to be honest with you. I'm doing a, Open water. I'm doing a triathlon in um, like oh, three mate. months' time, right? I and couldn't. the swim part of it, it's an open water swim. Do you know what scares me about that? It's like on land, I'm quite comfortable, quite happy. I'll be able to get away from the majority of stuff uh, in general, control my movement. Terrible swimmer. And also, like anything beneath me that I can't see coming, I just I don't like the thought of yeah. Something really... tickling your feet in the sea, and you're like, oh my mate, god, mate. But then you start panicking, and if yeah. you panic, and you're swimming, and you shit yourself, and just, you start, uh, you just never. Anything that happens in the water is never like low key. Do you know what I mean? It's like you're eaten by a shark, <laughs> uh, drown, <laughs> stand on a sea urchin. <laughs> Thanks everybody for watching. We hope you enjoyed this clip of the Fozcast. If you would like to watch the full episode, it is now available exclusively on Spotify for free.